Who were the first foreigners to land in what is now the U.S.? Most people would answer Christopher Columbus. But what if someone else discovered it hundreds of years earlier than we think? The ships they had at the time were much bigger than Columbus. Mysterious carved stones found off the coast of California threatened to turn American history upside down. I've never seen anything like this. Could these stones be proof that the Chinese beat Columbus to the New World? Bob Maestro was scuba diving off Palos Verde in Southern California when he made a strange discovery. I love to dive. There's just, it's a lot of intrigue. Every time you go, you don't know what you're gonna see. I used to collect seashells from an old man that I knew. And as I did it, I found two round balls down there with a hole in them. Now, how did that hole get there? I've never seen anything like this. I had no idea what this thing is. I had no idea. Nobody else did. The stone is unlike any natural object Bob has ever seen. Suspecting it must be man-made, Bob photographed the stone and sent it to experts in underwater archaeology. They suggest it might be a ship's anchor. Stone has been used to make boat anchors for more than 4,000 years. The ancient Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans all used stones with grooves or holes cut into them to secure their ships. Stone anchors were only replaced when iron and steel became widely available. Europeans who reached the coast of California in 1542 would have used metal. So where could stone anchors have come from? I've been studying those Palos Verde stones off and on for, gosh, 35, 40 years. Larry J. Pearson is an expert in nautical archaeology. The stone anchor style represented by the collection from Palos Verdes is a traditional anchor shape or group of anchor shapes that have been used continuously since very early times in China. The Chinese began switching from stone to metal anchors around 600 years ago. If Bob's anchors are at least that old, it could change everything we know about American history. Did the Chinese beat Columbus by over 100 years? It's a controversial theory. There's a huge fringe uh, fringe element out there that would like to believe in the tooth fairy and everything, you know. Larry Pearson has another less sensational theory. He thinks the rocks are from modern times. The most logical explanation for the presence of that assemblage at that location has to be 19th century Chinese fishing. Larry believes modern fishermen used an old technology because stone was cheap and readily available. Chinese fishermen in the 19th century California were using stone anchors of a style that had been used for thousands of years in China. But Bob Maestro isn't convinced that his stone anchors belong to 19th century immigrant fishermen. He claims some unrecovered anchors weigh thousands of pounds, way too big for immigrant fishing boats to even carry. But I think there's a couple out there that are three or 4,000 pounds, and I think the real big ones out in, in 60 feet of water, they gotta be uh, four or 5,000 pounds. To prove his point, Bob assembles a team to recover a giant anchor from Palos Verdes. Bob and his team soon salvage a huge stone weighing over 1,000 pounds. Could the crew of a small 19th century fishing boat have carried a stone like this? Amateur historian Dr. Su Liang Li has spent years studying the stones and has a remarkable explanation to the mystery. Li believes the anchors are from a massive fleet of ships under the command of 15th century Chinese admiral and explorer Zhang He. I can tell you this much. Chinese knew more about the world in Zhang He's time than all the European cartographers did. Zhang He's fleet is known to have reached India, the Middle East, and East Africa. Some scholars believe he rounded the bottom of Africa and made it to the Atlantic. 
But Dr. Li believes Zheng He got even further. What Zheng He did was actually going west from China through the Indian Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Pacific, and then head home. Li also believes the Chinese landed in the Carolinas, making contact with local Native American tribes. It's controversial, but if true, Li's theory would mean the Chinese circumnavigated the globe before the Spanish and beat Christopher Columbus to America. Remarkably, one piece of evidence may support this. The so-called Zheng He map. It is said to be a copy of a 15th century Chinese sailing map, which contains detailed descriptions of Native Americans. Does the history of America need to be rewritten? Historian Professor Jennifer Pertle doesn't think so. Chinese sailors had almost no experience in open water. Dr. Pertle believes the Chinese weren't capable of crossing oceans in the 15th century. They're used to sailing from one coastal landmark to the next one. And they also don't really know how to ride currents and wind patterns. So it's hard to imagine that the Chinese, without that experience of open water sailing, um, would actually be able to make that crossing easily. But Dr. Li claims he has more evidence Zheng He managed to cross the Atlantic. A mysterious brass medallion found buried in North Carolina. Along the route, Li believes the Chinese would have taken. I think one of the major pieces of evidence is my brass medallion. The main thing that caught my eye was the inscription. It says, Great Ming Xuande. Xuande is the emperor who sent out Zheng He. No one knows for sure how old the medallion is or where it came from. But to Dr. Li, the exposure to Chinese culture and technology had a powerful influence on the Native Americans' way of life, language, and even the way they wore their hair. But Dr. Lee's theory is not supported by most experts in this field. Dr. Pertle thinks it's strange that there are no Chinese records of Zheng He's alleged discovery. In a culture that was so good at documenting, recording, not only text, but pictures. So one would think that if the Ming had managed to reach North America, we would have some kind of textual record. If it wasn't the medieval Chinese who came to our shores and left great stone anchors, who did? New evidence from scientific dating done on a stone similar to the one found by Bob Maestro suggests the answer to this mystery could be even more extraordinary than anyone imagined. There was a test done down in San Diego they brought up a, a stone anchor, a round stone with a hole in it, up from very deep depth. It had not magnesium nodules growing on it, so they dated those magnesium nodules, and it was 4,000 years ago. The implications are remarkable. An ancient civilization reaching America's west coast four millennia ago. People in Europe didn't even know the existence of Pacific Ocean, so this has to come from Asia and most likely from China. We discovered these stones. We're inquisitive about it. I've always been that way in my life, and I want to find out what they are before I pass on. And we got to hurry. <laughs> the origins of the huge sunken stones remain a mystery. Are they discarded anchors? Did they belong to 19th century fishermen? Did a medieval Chinese admiral set foot on American soil generations before the Europeans? Or was America discovered thousands of years earlier than history tells us? Weird or what?